Case number seven is a patient with a painful mass in the fingers. Uh, there's two um, cases that I'm going to show of this entity. Uh, this first one is in the thumb. So we're looking at the distal phalanx. Here you can see the tuft of the distal phalanx. We're coming proximate. You can see the terminal or the distal portion of the flexor uh, pollicis as long as tendon inserting. Um, and then the subcutaneous plane of the patient reported uh, exquisite tenderness to pain and a sensation of a nodule. And as you scroll from medial to lateral, you can see this um, circumscribed hypoechoic nodule that stands out uh, within the uh, skin there. Um, the nodule uh, measures about, let's see, about 0 0.2 to 0 0.3. Uh, centimeters, so very, very small. Um, we'll look at it in other views. So this is coming now in short axis down the thumb, and you'll see the nodule appear right here and then disappear. So very small nodule. And in this particular case, we're not seeing much in terms of blood flow within this nodule here. So there's flow around it, but we just don't see much within it. MRI was performed, and this is an axial or short axis proton density fat suppressed uh, series, and you can see this little tiny nodule corresponding to where the patient was feeling the pain here. It is hyper intense uh, relative to the uh, surrounding soft tissues and, and would be to the muscle if we had muscle within the field of view. This second patient had exquisite pain uh, and swelling at the nail bed. Um, and you see this hypoechoic mass between the bone here and the nail up here with color Doppler showing marked uh, vascularity within this soft tissue uh, underneath the nail. An MRI was performed. This is another axial or short axis proton density fat suppressed uh, pulse sequence. And you can see in the third digit, the unaffected one, the distal phalanx and then the hypo-intense nail with a little bit of soft tissue underneath it. But in the affected one, when you come back, you see this um, PDFS hyper-intense nodule beneath the nail. You can see the nail right here, uh, corresponding to what we saw in the ultrasound. And even though this is a more typical location than the first case we saw, the signal characteristics and clinical findings are all similar. Um, the one question is why there wasn't as much flow in the first one, but the second case with the flow is more typical. So both of these were excised um, and were pathologically proven glomus tumors.